establishment came and took his little farm home of just two and a half acres or so. He was legally raising chickens and he'd beaten them in court over and over again since 2008. And I was reading they couldn't get the local sheriff involved, so somehow the feds were involved, and there was an explosion, and he's dead. And yesterday, Darren McBreen and our other great reporter and researcher, Marcos Morales, arrived there. They arrived there the evening before, and they went to the city hall that looks like it's a Capitol building or something. It's so large, and we're told by the police, yelled at, and told, you cannot, and we have footage of this, you cannot go in the city council building in, in broad daylight. I think it was like noontime or so, because they were on the show right after it happened, and we have that high-def footage they shot there on the ground. They're getting back tonight. We'll have it for you on the radio slash TV and the nightly news on Monday. And the police first got in their face, said, turn your cameras off. You're bad. You're not real media. And my guys are like, First Amendment, we're just going inside, very polite. And they said, you're not allowed to go in the building. Well, now there's been a new twist, and, and while Darren was getting ready for this live feed uh, from an iPhone via Skype, there in Roswell, Georgia, the site of a Gen 21 death uh, and destruction, as we document and chronicle a Gen 21 green zoning, because they were taking his land to make it a green zone, and of course, a, other land that they'd been taking. This was just the tail end piece they needed. Uh, but now it's not going to be a park they've announced. They're deciding to just sell it to some friends, of course. That's how it works. Usually they don't even build the uh, park. They're like, we're taking your neighbor's land for a park. The neighbor's like, oh, I want that. And then later, well, where's my park? You don't get that stupid. We're going to build a high rise on it now. But the point is, the police said you can't go in the city council headquarters public building. So I told him, I said, I want you to go back down there tomorrow, and if you choose to violate their unlawful order, and you choose to get arrested, I will sue them. I will pay to sue them. But I said, don't resist, obviously, and I said, and don't go in if you don't want to get arrested. Well, they backed off. Now, as we were waiting to go live here during the last three-minute break, Darren McBreen was standing in front of the city hall, and two police cars pull up behind him. So they're in the shot right now, keeping an eye on the dangerous reporter. But there's been a new twist. And Darren McBreen will tell us about that. Darren, thank you for joining us, sir. Well, Alex, what a difference a day makes. Um, you know, yesterday, like I said, we were harassed. We actually called the community relations spokesperson today. Her name is uh, Julie Breckbell. And, um, you know, we told her that we would be returning to City Hall today and asked her if, you know, we should expect harassment by the police. Basically, uh, today, it's a different story. You know, they rolled out the welcome wagon. She invited us into the building. She even was gracious enough <laughs> to uh, participate in an interview. But nobody is talking about the case of Andrew Wardes. Uh, not a single person. In fact, we we're even told that, um, you know, the mayor, um, um, Norm, or uh, what's his name, Jerry Wood, uh, that he actually made a press conference. I believe it was at Wardes' his funeral. And that's the only public statement, and he even informed the public at that time that this would be the last time, and that he's not going to talk to the public about this topic again. Oh, really? I'm not going to talk about the topic again? That's what Congressman Weiner said early on. Yeah, so so nobody's answering questions. It's it's very odd, um, you know, and and. You know, when you when you rush up the steps with a microphone and a camera, it's just strange, you know, yesterday to be surrounded by police. You know, it felt like one of those fictitious suburban towns in the Twilight Zone. I would just I couldn't believe it. But like I said, today, it's a different story. It might have to do with the fact that we we're told that there's nobody in the city council that's even here today. The mayor's not here. Nobody's here. So maybe it's because there's no. Yeah, no, that's the twist. That. They were all yeah. there. Marcos had gone in before you to make sure it was the right building. Uh, they're in the sprawling government complex uh, feeding on the public. Yeah. And, and, and then she threw him out and said, no, just leave. You try to come in. They block you. And then now today you were saying it was a ghost town in there. So, oh, go ahead. Come on in now because you can't talk to anybody because you know, they're all off playing golf or something. Yeah, and you know, and, and I think they're fully aware by now that, that we are, you know, very knowledgeable of our rights, you know, so they know that we're not going to be budged you know and i think it's i think that's important for everybody to know if if you know your rights 
you're protected, but if you don't, you know, they will uh, jump all over you. I mean, they will, they will take advantage of that fact. So it's really ruled by consent. <laughs> It is. Now, Now you've talked to more people trying to investigate Mr. Wordis's death. Um, and again, we have a, a report last night. You followed the nightly news. It's 21, green kiss of death. Uh, but uh, what are we learning now about the way he died? Is there any further investigation? I know there's conflicting news reports because nobody's talking now that some of the police refuse to take part uh, in the uh, in the raid uh, against the evil chicken farmer. You know, I think the strangest thing is that we actually have more questions now than we did when we first got here. You know, it, it, it's just that nobody is talking. You know, there has been um, some people that uh, some police that have told us that they refused, that they didn't want to participate, but uh, they didn't want to talk on camera. We're trying to get Sheriff Jackson. We're trying to get his, um, uh, you know, what, what he thinks about all this. We're told that he might talk to us. I talked to his secretary. No phone calls back. Now, I know you've tried to talk to some of the journalists and others. What are locals saying? Do we, do we know anything? It's just well, the locals, house blows yeah. up when there's a raid, and they say, we, we think he committed suicide, and then we get there, and they're acting all suspicious. Yeah, I think the locals, uh, they, from, from what I've talked to the locals, they feel that it was a suicide, uh, but they're, you know, they're just, I think they're still in shock. You know, the guy was well-loved in the community, um, you know, the school children loved him. Uh, he, you know, he, he was friends with the mayor. You know, he borrowed the mayor's tractor to grade his own property because the city, you know, refused to maintain the uh, the sewage and the um, the drain. Uh, well, you then know, why the, won't the the, why won't the mayor talk to you then? Because I know, I mean, I know reportedly he's not the kingpin and all this, and was friends with him. So it's the code enforcement people. You know, over and over again, it's like the mayor, the police chief. They just do whatever these bureaucrats tell them. Look, the mayor issued an official press conference and like i said i believe it was uh, at andrew warder's funeral and he informed the public that this is it this is the last time we're talking about this so any questions to the uh, that the media has on this case they are just simply referring everyone to the mayor's official press conference which i haven't seen or read but uh, i can assure you as soon as we get to a computer we'll check that out but they just they don't want to talk to anybody well, and it's not just infowars.com it's all the rest of the media as well but uh, obviously we're the only ones that are pressing the issue they just uh, do their jobs by remaining silent darren let's expand on this uh, because i know as soon as we disconnect from you you're going to remember a bunch of stuff you wanted to cover uh, but 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 bottom line, this is death by bureaucrat. I mean, do, do, are they saying now how he blew himself up or why they think he blew himself up or who was involved? Because I'm told feds were involved, that the uh, police department was involved, that the sheriff wouldn't be involved. That's in one news article. Other articles say the police wouldn't be involved and it was constables. Others say it was federal environmental police. Who raided the house? We were told that it was county marshals. That's it. They were the only ones. There was no police department. So it was, it was county marshals. They did, um, and this is not official, but I've also heard reports that they did find a detonation device, what appeared to be a detonation device inside the house. We videotaped and took pictures of uh, a, a, an empty gasoline can that was actually charred and, and burned right outside the home. Found some uh, rubber gloves, and there was a uh, police line, you know, around the house. Do not enter, but we were able to get our cameras and kind of look inside. I think I told you yesterday, inside the property was it looked much more devastating on the inside than it did the outside. You, you could see damage, you could see the burn from the outside, but inside is completely gutted um, and burnt to a yeah, crisp. Well, I've got news camera footage from squad cars across the country where they'll get into somebody's RV and go, look, we found pipe bomb parts, and they'll hold up jumper cables. Um, that happened in a case of a fellow I actually personally know, and it had the squad car footage and the helicopter footage, but, but later in the trial, the squad car footage, and he gets out, uh, what, Farrell Montgomery's his name. There's actually a clip of it in Road to Tyranny. Mm -hmm. And it, is it Road to Tyranny or is it Masters of Terror? I forget. The point is, he gets out of his little RV. They taser him. They let the police dog bite him for no reason. And then they go on the news and say, we're arresting him for a pipe bomb. And, and they hold up jumper cables. And then later they had to drop it. And it's just like... You know, who knows? See, that's the thing. When government lies this much, I don't know if I believe anything they say, Darren. It's, it's like NASA says they've 99% proven Martian bacteria. 
uh, in the samples from the Viking spacecraft that landed there in, in, in 76. I don't know if that's true. I mean, you can't believe anything they say. Well, and the, the strangest thing, too, uh, it, it, we have a community spokesperson who isn't speaking. I mean, you know, she talked to us. She invited us in today. Yesterday, she sent the police after us. But today, you know, we were invited in, but still... None of our questions were answered. Did you ask her why she sent the police after you yesterday? Yeah, she said she did not. She did not. So, and she she also said today that it was wrong for them to tell us to leave. Um, you know, so today she's on our side. Yesterday it was a twilight zone. Well, again, I want to ask police something and these bureaucrats. Do you really want your kids growing up in a country like this, where 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 journalists show up in in, in suits and ties? And, and are walking up and police jump out and yell at them and say you can't go in the city hall? I mean, that is an unlawful thing they did. And this is happening everywhere. And I gave the analogy yesterday, Darren, I want your take on this. It'd be like if you owned a bass boat with your neighbor and you're out on the bass boat and, you know, the neighbor happens to be a cop and they shoot a hole in the bottom of the boat and say, aha, I'm sinking your boat. You're like, but it's your boat, too. You're in it, too. I mean, when you butcher the Bill of Rights and Constitution, that you swear an oath to protect and defend, by the way, there's a reason that's what your oath's to, you're destroying your own future. And there's all these excuses of, oh, that's the way it is. And, 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 and of course, they, they demoralize the police because it is a thankless, horrible job. I mean, you couldn't pay me $500,000 to do it. Uh, and I know some cops now are paid over $100,000 in many areas, but still... I mean, it, 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 after a while, it, it sounds like, but so, so, I mean, look, this country didn't used to have police. You had sheriffs and others for serious crimes or to get warrants after a crime was committed to bring somebody to justice. Now you got everybody calling the police on each other if their dog poops in their yard. You know, that's not what police are for, Darren. Or if you have too many chickens. But we don't know if that's true. You know, they claimed that uh, one of Andrew's neighbors did not like his number of chickens. And, you know, it's just silly. I mean, Andrew, we've seen his property. He kept it up to code. Um, you know, the place looked great. And, and from what we, what we understand, he was actually the official on raising chickens. He would teach other people how to do it. But uh, according to the, um, you know, city hall here, someone complained, and then he had, oh, God forbid, he had too many chickens on his property. Well, he's dead now, so they have uh, must feel yeah. good about themselves. And he dared to borrow a tractor from the mayor and grade his own property to protect his property from flooding. You know, my grandfather had a heart attack that ended up basically killing him a few years later. Might as well have been dead because the heart attack and then the heart surgery and then the stroke it caused. But I remember he was getting these $2,000 a day fines because they, they've got actuaries in Austin where they only hit old people, I've noticed. Uh, and Because and, I was doing these stories myself and they didn't have cable, but they heard from the neighbor about my story. And my grandfather's like in a little blue collar area of South Austin. My grandmother still lives there. He goes, my mom's dad, he goes, Alex, I'm getting these $2,000 a day fines. They say I've got to clean out the creek. But he goes, here's my property line. And the city is, and of course, he was smart and informed, unlike most people uh, who they prey on. He goes, he goes, can you do something about this or do I go to the city council? Because that's not my property. That's a drainage ditch off the road. And I'm not supposed to keep that clear. The city is. And I said, well, I'll, sure, I'll do something about it. And uh, But I left that day. It was a Sunday. I used to go over there and eat, eat Sunday evenings, eat dinner with my grandparents, and I watched 60 Minutes with him. And a few days later, uh, a few days later, I, I go, yeah, I, I'm going to just hire a company to come do it. It's quicker than fighting the city. And she's like, my grandmother's like, oh, he's already been out there all day. You know, he's like 70-something years old, a, a little bit overweight and stuff. Uh, he's been out there all day cleaning out all the brush and stuff that had gotten in there that the code enforcers told him he had to clean that wasn't even his brush. And then a couple of days later, he had a heart attack. And I think that's part of it. Probably broke some you know, plaque loose and did that. But that's how they operate. And that's, that's, that's what they do. And I saw him giving people $2,000 a day fines for three-inch grass. And it was always when somebody wanted their property, we'd find. It was always cancer patients, people like that. So I just went and showed the city council people with, with, with three-foot grass in the city and demanded they have criminal charges on them. 
was actually told that by a police officer. <laughs> the police started giving me all the data on the city council people who had who had code violations because they didn't like going. Oh, because that was the thing. They were ordered with Rolling Nellingson to go arrest him uh, because he hadn't paid the fines. Anyway, yeah. side issue. Anything else, McBrain? No, and like I said, Alex, you know, it's just very tragic, and we, we're left here with more questions than we even began with. Uh, there's some very shady dealings in the background going on with the foreclosure. You know, we're going to look more into that. Uh, very suspicious, uh, you know, things going on there. So we're trying to talk to his attorney who was helping him with the uh, try to fight the foreclosure. So maybe we'll have an update on you on that. You know, you know, Darren, I was thinking Later this afternoon. Thank you, Darren. I was thinking earlier that maybe it was a smaller town. It was like a little city council that maybe they close sometimes. That looks like the Tennessee capital or something. This must be a really big town and with giant steps leading up to it. And they were telling you you couldn't go in that public mausoleum. Well, it's it's uh, what is it? What? 40 minute drive from Atlanta. But, you know, there's. You, you really can't tell. I mean, it at least seems like a big town to me, so, but, um... Well, I mean, that looks like a bigger city council than Austin has. That's a gi <laughs> gi gigantic it building. It's pretty big. Yeah. Hey, can yeah, you have, um, building. Can, uh, can, you have Mar can you have Marcos pan and show people a bigger shot of it who are watching? All right. We're going to pan to City Hall. Hey, great job, Darren and Marcos. We'll get more reports from you this evening and back uh, next week. And, you know, it's an important case... Uh, of government run wild and it is agenda 21 it was designated to be an environmental zone and uh, they uh, well he's dead now so they i guess they're going to get their property and so there is that report i'm going to come back and uh, go to jenny and jam in a call from thomas and others we'll do a little bit of overdrive to make sure i at least get to the five n newest calls or oldest calls uh russell thomas jenny john marie we'll get to all of you uh, after this quick break but look it is the american system to dislike big government and mistrust it. The minute you start loving big government, you're gonna live in North Korea. I mean, it's that simple. And by the way, we were interrupting each other because the Skype's delayed by about a second. And so it was, it was, but still incredible technology on the ground with an iPhone and a microphone communicating to us from thousands of miles away, incredible. And that's InfoWars News, stay with us. I really can't get over the fact that HBO is now having pedophilia on television like it's cute. That report is at Infowars.com. Kurt Nemo's got one coming out dealing with the fact that torture has been legalized in the United States just under a new name. So watch Infowars.com for that to come out in the next hour or so uh, and, and tying it into the proliferation of this. Right now, let's go back to your phone calls. Jenny in New York, welcome. Hello, Alex. Hi. Um, I, I have personally known about the establishment since I was seven years old because they used to test on me with their drugs. And I actually was compliant about, uh, about it until 2003 when I wanted to fight back because the state of New York wanted to take my son away from me because of my mental illness. So... I filed a petition in my county court, um, and my ex-husband's wife counter-petitioned me and ended up winning with a power of attorney, and she signed the, his name, my ex-husband's name, so neither me or my ex-husband ever saw, uh, signed the adoption paperwork, so the adoption's only signed by her. Yeah, well, there's all sorts of stuff out there like that. That doesn't sound like that's legal or lawful. Thank you so much for the call. Another terrible story there. As society degenerates and disintegrates, and it really is. Everybody knows that's the case. We need to repent and turn from our wicked ways, myself included. And even if you're not a Christian, I just mean we've got to recognize good from evil. I mean, come on. Thomas in Kansas, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex. Uh, what's going on, man? Worldwide Transmission. Long-time listener. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Uh, I was actually at work yesterday, and I picked up the Kansas City Star, and there was, on the front page, actually, was an article on how uh, the Department of, of Justice is suing uh, Apple for, uh, I don't know, conspiring with publishers for uh, making their e-books higher price. What is illegal about that? 
Well, that's what they always do. I did see the uh, Justice Department. That's like having Beelzebub go after a smaller demon. I did see where they're going after Apple uh, for trying to work with distributors to have a higher price. Uh, Amazon, you know, basically acts like Walmart and drives down the price, which actually just destroys publishers and smaller companies and makes them huge profits. Uh, it's all part of monopolies. I'm no fan of Apple and its overall business practices, uh, but uh, I don't think that's illegal. But it, it, I'm not an antitrust expert, uh, but, but in general terms, they're always going after some little petty thing to act like they're doing something while ignoring the larger big crimes. Well, the interesting thing is, is uh, you know, it was headed up by Eric Holder. And it's just amazing to me that he would, just like you say, do something petty like this, which isn't petty for Apple, but, you know, this is what creates, like, the lobbying for, you know, corporations to just throw a bunch of money in government to get them to leave them alone. Sure, but uh, re refreshing my memory, I think it was Apple and Kindle being sued for working together to drive down the price. You're saying it was to drive up the price? Well, here's what the article said. The article basically said that, okay, uh, the Department of Justice was accusing Apple and the publishers of conspiring together of uh, driving up the price of ebooks because publishers wanted more money from ebooks. And so they were going to drop their ebooks for Amazon and just go with, uh, with Apple. Yeah, that makes sense. I, you know, I scanned over the article, and it just, it's not that important to me in the larger scheme because it, it's like polishing, well, a polishing a you-know-what. It just, it, in the final equation, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, the Justice Department is a joke, and it, it only puts on appearances that it's trying to stop crime and things like that. Okay, another hour coming up straight ahead. Stay with us. Let's go to Russell in Texas, then John and Marie. Russell, you're on the air. How you doing, Alex? Good. Okay, Alex, I'm going to cover some uh, topics here. First of all, I'm just going to say Kenny Tangerine is a winner. You're absolutely right. Now, I'm going to cover uh, Jim Humble, MMS, Tom Leppert, uh, Leppert, the mayor of Dallas who's running for Senate, and NASA relatives uh, being, uh, you know, getting into the TSA as part of their job, and then the Texas militia. All right. Uh, have you heard of uh, Jim Humble, who created a multi-miracle supplement? No. Okay. You need to look that up on the in Internet. You can do a search on MMS. I understand, but you won't get to all your points uh, if you don't move quick. Go, go to the next point. I'm going to move real quick here. Multi-miracle uh, supplement kills all viruses and bacteria in your body. It's, it's, being used, it's been used for a long time. It's a surveyor that uh, was prospecting for cold. Two guys are ready, about ready to die from malaria. And uh, he discovered this from water pills. Look it up. It kills all viruses in your body. All right. Thank you for the call, sir. I appreciate it. We just don't have time to get to the other points now. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to John in Texas. John, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Hey, buddy. This is John here in Austin, Texas. Nice to talk to you after listening to you for so many years. I'm not selling you anything today. Uh, I want to let you know that I heard something the other day through an APD police officer about the Walmart shooting of the cop that Walmart has a policy about their employees not putting hands on any customers, and the two people who wrestled the guy to the ground are apparently being fired from Walmart. You're kidding. This is what I understand. I, I, I work in a convenience store, and I, I got this bit of conversation from the cashier talking to, the, uh, to a, a police officer who came in the store, and he was not pleased about it. Apparently... Walmart has issued, I guess, the opposite of a press release to the police department, I guess a press unreleased, telling them not to talk about it. I figure I'd tell you because you got a crew of reporters and you might know a guy on the inside of the police department to get to the bottom of it. I'm blown away by it. I so. tell you what, we don't ever really use this anymore because so many thousands of people called it and, 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 and a lot of it wasn't serious. But what would happen is some crazy people would leave like 500 messages a day. Um, do we still check that comment line, guys? Okay, this comment line is only for police officers to call and to confirm or deny what, what that gentleman's saying. But it's part of the nanny state where kids can't play dodgeball, where you can't run at school, where you can't spank your kids. So the whole society degenerates. If it's true, 
because they're trying to train the public not to help each other or anybody else that Walmart is going to fire the two employees that tackled the guy that had the gun. That's because they don't want any liability. They'd rather everybody just get killed and say, well, we, we have nothing to do with it. Just amazing. Because I know that is their policy. They say don't, uh, don't defend yourself. It's like in school. They say let a bully beat you up. I mean, it, it, their own horn by, by, by patting themselves on the back because they gave the officer's family 50 grand. Uh, but they uh, apparently are putting the, the two employees are on. That's another uh, that point. Instead of shutting the whole city down for a five hour uh, parade down I-35 and the rest of it, why didn't they just give the money of the tens of thousands of dollars that that cost or a lot more to the family? I mean, why why make this giant spectacle? I mean, and they just get bigger and bigger uh, every time stuff happens. I'll have to look into that. Here's the comment line. 512-646-4444, but if you're in Austin, obviously, no 512-646-4444, 646-4444, and I'll, I'll also bring that up Sunday because that's important. So, so he told you matter-of-factly, not that he heard it, but that it was definitely a fact that, that, he, that, that they were talking about firing those employees? And then here's the, here's the kicker. She used to work at Walmart, and she said that that's their policy, that you can't... Because, you know, Walmart doesn't prosecute people for stealing less than 25 or $50 worth of merchandise. So they have this policy where you can't grab somebody, apparently. Anyhow. Uh, no, I'm just dumbfounded by what you're saying. And I was thinking about, but it's okay for them to own slave camps with little kids making the products. Well, you know, all the products now they find have blood on them. And the little bitty fingers... Bleeding.